We are Dukes and Bell. We start off every day and every hour by saying, hey, hey man. man. Thanks for all the picks. Enjoying a nice cold Hey Man Ale, the original OG 5% blonde, uh, 5% alcohol, mm-hmm. blonde ale. And then, of course, the uh, watermelon lime, which is delicious. Thank you, guys, man. We appreciate you checking the beer out. If you've not had the beer, you can get it at any Publix in the state of Georgia. It's at all your local package stores as well. Mike Camp is here. We've been talking about our shows being out Thursday and Friday, the morning shift, Steakhouse, Andy and Randy, all at training camp. And then we'll do our show from Hooters Mall of Georgia. But we're going to be out there and... Team's making decisions today, okay? And and I want to start with the Falcons because the few things that have happened today, um, one of them kind of interesting, and that is they re-signed McCall Pruitt, Michael Pruitt, should mm-hmm. I say, tied in. Last year, guys, he had four touchdowns. Right. And I think, Mike, you add him to to, to Pitts and Jonu Smith, and all of a sudden now it gives you more options potentially in the red zone. I have to think that's the way they're thinking about this, right? Yeah, now, again, some of these things are just to have extra bodies. And, again, this guy certainly you know, surprised a lot of folks. As Carl said, man, 16 receptions made it count with uh, four touchdowns. And, again, there's a dude that, uh, if you remember, guys, scored a touchdown in the win against the 49ers, scored a touchdown in the uh, last game of the season that we won against Tampa Bay. So caught one one of those from Mariota, caught one from, uh, from uh, Desmond Ritter, but, uh, yeah, we, it, it kind of reminds me of the old days of Dan Reeves. Dan Reeves had, like, five tight ends on the roster back in the, <laughs> in the late 90s. But, yeah, this is a, a dude that certainly, you know, served a, a, a key role. And whether you're going to – again, we're, I'm not saying we're going to roll out a four tight end set, but, but, we, it's, right, but we're going to have two. We're going to have a lot of two tight end sets out there, I can tell you that. we got a lot of tight ends. All right, also uh, today – and I don't, I don't know if this was a surprise, but the Falcons um, basically wave Caleb Huntley – Played basically one season, guys. He ran hard, Mm -hmm. but this was a failed physical designation. So they had to make a decision on him. And, Mike, we kept hearing, you know, maybe he'll be back, maybe he'll be back. But uh, they have waived him. So that is news today from the Falcons. And then uh, Locust Grove kid, by the way, as you said, when he got a chance to play, he was like a bowling ball out there. But unfortunately, this and this may be one of what did we say earlier? One of those like sort of like uh, injury designation type things where you get a, you know, they'll they'll, they'll get paid. But it's unfortunate you don't make obviously the the full time full check. And then uh, non-football injury list, Calais Campbell. And I'm going to let you hear Calais here in a second. Um, But that is out there as the Falcons have placed Calais Campbell on the non-football injury list. And I say this earlier, I'll say it again. Falcon fans, don't be afraid of that comment or that that statement. It doesn't mean he's injured. It doesn't mean he's not available to play or practice, okay? They can activate him at any point. There's nothing major to worry about. So I just, I think this more, Mike, is about a guy who's been in the league a long time and doesn't need the extra wear and tear. And he's not like he's sitting at home on a couch eating like ring dings, okay? I saw the video of him walking into Flower Branch in the headquarters, the dude has been there. He, remember, guys, he was putting the work in in the spring. Think about that. So this is, again, I think immediately people go, what do you, what do you mean he's injured? No, no, this is wear and tear to Carl's point. There's no reason this guy needs to be out there slogging it. You know what this guy brings to the table. Let's hear from Calais Campbell starting his 16th season. As you get older, you kind of appreciate the grind a lot more. So, you know, you kind of appreciate the, the training camp, uh, you know, first day of school, being around the guys. Like, you know, now it's, you know, we're going to battle. Now it's real, you know, like, you know, mini camp OTAs are, you know, it's a part of the process as well, but it's not nowhere close to the same as training camp. Training camp's a different beast. I mean, you come in on a mission now, uh, you know, ready to go out there and, uh, you know, and you know, stake a claim. You know, like, hey, you know, we're coming this year. You know, we'll be the best we can be. Go out there and compete and, uh, you know, try to win ball games. Yeah, and I know that uh, we've been banging the drum on this all offseason long, but for years, guys, especially the last two or three, you, you've had situations where there was like one guy goes down, the offensive line falls apart. You know, in the defense, you know, you bring it in guys, as we said, oh, who's this guy we just signed? It's like, yep. he's, been, he's been on four teams in three years, practice squad on three of them. So it's not the case. This year, you've got quality. Now, we've got depth. Some of these guys are short-term fixes, but you've got, regardless, you've got more depth and more numbers in the key positions in the trenches. Um, yeah, and, and <clears throat> I think also uh, a pleasant surprise. We hadn't talked a lot about him, but he knows how to play. And they were committed to him playing here. And then he said, I don't want to play. And he wanted to take it some time off. Eddie Goldman. Yep. Eddie Goldman's a guy that, again, we hadn't talked a whole lot about. But, guys, I'm telling you, he may be a pleasant surprise for this team. He is reported to camp today. He's only 29. I know, Mike. He's in his prime. Right. This is the thing. Like, he's not an old guy that can't play anymore. 
he literally, I guess, mentally just needed a break or whatever it was. And then he was like, I want to play. And the Falcons was like, well, come on, let's go. And this dude, he's part of the Florida State National Championship team. He's a big nose tackle. He'll be in that rotation. Now, again, he'll play tackle along with Grady Calais. And just as we said, the, the, I guess the, the first team to really kind of make it in vogue was the Giants beating Brady up. It was the NASCAR package. But that basically everybody now tries. Look at the Eagles. The Eagles rotate tons of guys in defensive line. That's what we're trying to do here. Absolutely. 404-726-0929 as we talk about our Falcons gearing up for camp. News coming out about releases, waving uh, guys, and more importantly, who they're signing. Um, let's hear from A.J. Terrell, Mike. He said that uh, the DBs this offseason, they were training, getting together. They were trying to put the work in. We train. Uh, with Oliver Davis at SFSP, um, we got some of the guys to come before they had left and went to their respected states. But um, they, you know, they came in. We had at least about eight eight DBs all trained together, so we get it in. Trying Pause. to get trying to get the work in, and we were talking about this. Uh, Cowboys Trayvon Diggs, five years, ninety seven million. And the reason why I said this is important is because we're gonna have to pay AJ. And you mm -hmm. don't let great, good players or great players walk, especially in their prime. And so, A.J., at some point, Mike, we hadn't really talked about it. No need, but he's going to get his bag. Right. And guys have asked, well, what happens if Jeff Okuda balls that? Well, well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. You He'll know, get a bag, but it'll be yeah. maybe a little bit less. And worst case scenario, if Okuda rediscovers the game which made him a top pick, then maybe he gets paid somewhere else, but he's certainly going to help us in the 2023 season, and that will certainly help A.J. Terrell and Richie Grant and the young guys and look, Jesse Bates. Secondary, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Show me the, what's the weak area on this team. Would you say is it edge rusher? Well, no. Cade Nellis comes into this team from the Saints with seven sacks, which is more than anybody had last year. We've talked about Bud Dupree, Calais Campbell. We talked about the interior guys on Yamada. You know, the guy that, you know, you and I were talking about this, and then yesterday, Fricky and I were kind of going around some of the names. You know, how about Anderson at linebacker? You know, is this is this the year where you know? Cause remember the guys I said yesterday to John. I think we were doing it in the Falcon report. There were some Georgia fans crawl in their bag about not drafting Nicobe Dean. He went later in the third round. But Anderson was the dude that had all this upside. Well, I want to see that upside translate to some some butt kicking this year at linebacker. I hope so. Um, I do think the backers as a group is better than we were, than we had last year. And they can move some side to side without having somebody from the offense a lot of the other team on their face, right? Yeah. That's I, part of the whole idea. What about uh, Ritter, right? We're going to be asked this question. We are going to be asking this question, should I say, all throughout camp. We'll see him, Mike. I don't, I don't, I don't know if we're going to see him in every, every one of these preseason games. Meaning see, but you, the just, length of time. I was asking the question, do you think he'll play like three quarters of some of these games? Uh, no way. Second game? So weird now with just three. Two quarters max. I don't. Yeah, and that's the. That's I think he's going to get his reps. Yeah, yeah. I just. <laughs> I only say that to say I don't even know after preseason if you will be completely sold because you will mm. not have seen him enough to say yes. We're going into the regular season first game against the Panthers, which is a must win, by the way. <laughs> he's is. ready to go. Okay, I don't. Let's not act like that Panthers game is just a blow by or no. we don't care. Division games make the difference. You know, you, you win, you go four and two in your division, like, likely going to make the playoffs. I mean, with the, with the schedule, we got a very advantageous schedule. Now, some teams are supposed to stink based on last year's winning percentage will be better. Others will go the other way. Yesterday, we had a soundbite of Dan Campbell saying, you know, got to stop with the hype for, for the Lions because people are like, anointing these guys. They haven't won anything in decades. But, you know, that's a team which maybe we go up to Detroit. That's going to be tough. So the early first quarter of the season, most Falcon fans, I think, think of Jordan Love and the Packers as that's a win. Gotta By the be. way, did you hear what the Packers said about Jordan Love? What did they say? This is like, well, we're gonna, we're not going to evaluate him over three or four games. He's going to have at least the first half of the season. Half? I mean, are you kidding me? You idiots drafted this guy when you could have gotten some more skilled position players for Aaron Rodgers in his prime, and now you're telling me you're going to baby this guy, Jordan? You're going to need, what, 10 games to you know if Jordan Love is the man or not? I mean... Chris, am I wrong here? I read that I read that that article today, and the soundbite didn't make any sense. No, yeah, the president of the team, Mark Murphy, came out and said that he will have at least half of the season half? to figure out the NFL before the team quote evaluates him. I don't need half a season to know if a guy can play or not. But we need. Here's the thing: got to be more than four games. I still don't know what I got with Desmond Ritter. <laughs> So, I mean, eight is well, a nice round number. But but here's the deal. The reason why you don't, if that was four games at the beginning of the season, by game six, you would have you would have right. known, right? right? And, and let's be honest. The, the four games that Ritter played, I, I I can buy into that. It mm -hmm. wasn't like he was terrible and turned the ball over, uh, uh, you know, eight times in four games. 
It's Dukes and Bell with Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. Let's hear from Chris Lindstrom talking about Ritter. This is what we were talking about, about uh, the preseason playing and how much, much, how much time he'll actually get. Yeah, Des is, Des is an amazing teammate for one, and then two, um, his command in and out of the huddle. So as an offensive lineman, you're just thinking of um, communication of the play, and I think, you know, you, you see that quarterback's documentary, like that's a challenge in itself of those guys communicating that. And so he does a phenomenal job. Um, talking about, uh, you know, the, the cadence, stuff like that, and then his composure on the line of how he communicates with us is uh, really amazing. And so being able to get those reps and uh, to work with him and then this spring, it's, it's, it's going to be great. Did you hear the first thing he said? Phenomenal teammate. That may not mean anything to you, but it means everything to them. If I love you as a teammate and I buy into your leadership, I'm willing to go to war with you. I'm willing to do whatever we need to do to make this happen. He didn't start to sound by by like, yeah, he throws a deep ball well. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal teammate. And that's what I've been hearing the entire offseason about Desmond Ritter, which is why I'm all in. This has got to work. We can't be in the quarterback business the next two or three years. This has got to work. Is it going to work? Mm, I'm not as enthusiastic as you. I want to be. I'm trying to be. It's got to work. Keeping it real, Carl. As the kids say, keep it hunted. I'm just saying. It's got to work, Mike. I mean, I just, I, I needed more. I, You know me. We should have started him against the stinking bears after that stupid hand grenade toss in Charlotte by Mr. Quitter, Mr. Hawaiian Flunk, you know? So sick. I'm so, I'm so worked up about this season because the only variable I don't have any locked in idea or premonition about is the quarterback, which happens to be the most important part of the damn team. I know what I'm going to get from the D-line. I know what I'm going to get from the corners. I know what I'm going to get from our running backs. I don't know what I'm going to get from the QB. I'm all in. This has got to work. <laughs> I mean, hell, if it, it don't. You know what this is? Yeah. This is like when you go to counseling, and after counseling, you're like, this has got to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know you what? You can't go through all that we've been through for the last five years hey, and this not work. Get the left hand warmed up in the bullpen. Oh. The right hand, you got to go to a Heineke. Oh, Jeremy no, Heineken. Listen, if we go to Heineke, this thing has gone wrong. Uh, maybe not. Maybe, maybe Heidi can get the magic. We don't know. Maybe Trey Lance, what? anyone? He's you know, apparently hey, available. Stop it. Stop it right Trey now. Lance, I don't know what he is. Nobody knows what he is. I don't want Heidi. Huh? I don't want Lance. <laughs> we need Ritter to kick ass. That's what we need. Oh. 